and I was a big fan of Sarah Jessica Parker, and I thought she was like, um, you know, just sort of the from from me the perfect actress who brought that right amount of like intelligence and humor, and she, I thought you know just like she's she just had the just the right energy and the right vibe and could carry off this character who I thought, first of all, you know, was um, the idea that a woman would be, you know, kind of free and open about her sexuality and having a lot of sex and and be that independent and the audience would not think she was a bitch because I think that was a real, you know, that there was a, that, that was a fine line, especially then, that, you know, an independent woman who was very very owned her sexuality, you know, that people would say, oh my God, she's like, she's bitchy or she's like too strong. And Sarah, you know, had uh, just an incredible likability that she could do all that and he still loved her. Mm -hmm. um, so she was the first big piece of the puzzle for me in terms of putting, putting it together. I didn't write with her in mind, um, but when I wrote it and thought about who could do this, she's the person that like, you know, came to me, you know, popped into my head. And, you know, again, it's like there was no, like Night or 2 and 0, there was no, um, there was no sense at HBO like, wow, this is going to be a big hit show. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like I had to push hard to get, to even get the pilot made, you know. It was like, I, you know, there was, it, I brought uh, Susan Seidelman in to direct it, who I wanted to bring a, a female director in and a feature director. And, um, you know, I love, you know, some of the movies she'd done, like Desperately Seeking Susan, and um, and she had, a, you know, a nice New York sensibility, so she came in to direct it, and, and I got Sarah involved, and I thought that was great for HBO also, because she was a name. And um, that's, it just, you know, we, di we did a pilot. And, um, you know, it went, it went from there. They were always amazing collaborator collaborators and very supportive. But I think when you look back on these things, it it always seems like oh, it was just um, you know it was so it, everything was preordained, but it just it completely wasn't. We didn't cast Kim initially as Samantha. There was another actress that was cast, and um, I showed the tape to my partner at the time, who's a director, who said um, you you can't cast that woman. For, you can't do it. You have to cast Kim Patrol. And I said, well, Kim is, you know, she passed on the role and he was friends with her and he called her and basically said, you know, asked her, please have lunch with me. And I went out and we had lunch and she, you know, was very gun shy about doing a series. And then she, um, she agreed to go in and test for it. And I, and, you know, HBO and Chris Albrecht were really great about, you know, recognizing that she was the better person for the role. And, uh, and and so we we cast her, and it's like it's one of those things where you think, you know what? I'm not sure the show would have it, without Ken, it wouldn't have worked. I mean, that's why casting is so it's so important, and you just have to like get, you know, the stars just have to align so completely that you wonder how any any shows where it all works out, like it's all, you know, you just are very, you know, it's it's there's there's just so much good fortune involved in getting the right cast together. And you need that, you need that right cast. You need the script and you need the cast. Kristen and I cast on Melrose Place, so I knew Kristen and I, and I just felt like she had, knowing Kristen, I thought she had like the qualities of a Charlotte. I could see her doing it, I could picture her doing it. And, um, and so, yeah, so that was like, for me that was like an easy call. Cynthia I wasn't really familiar with and, um, uh, she came in to read, and she was a very well-known, um, she had a big Broadway career, and the character was a redhead, and this is sort of maybe, you know, uh, an a example of my lack of imagination, but at the time Cynthia had blonde hair, she came in to read, and I just thought, but the character's a redhead. I just don't see her, she's a redhead. And then I'm like, oh yeah, you can call her hair. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, Cynthia, uh, was, you know, I mean, I think she was kind of like this, just had so much Broadway cred and just actress cred coming into this. And so, so good in the show, in fact, that it took me a long time before I 
was even able to sort of realize that Cynthia Nixon was not Miranda. <laughs> I mean, I just assumed Cynthia Nixon that her that she was Miranda. That was her personality. That's who she was, and she's nothing like Miranda. But it really did take me about like an entire season to understand how Cynthia was in, completely not Miranda as a as, just, as a person and a human being. She just com- she just just inhabited that role. 